So God said, I am who I am. And I've always wondered why God was so evasive, or at least I thought, God was so evasive of Moses' question. In churchy circles, we call this phrase, I am who I am, the tetragrammaton. And we call it that way, tetra meaning four, because I am who I am. Those four letters are so profound. They are, in fact, the strongest words in the whole Hebrew Bible. In fact, many of our Orthodox Jewish friends won't even pronounce the words of the Tetragrammaton because it's that strong. But to God, that phrase, I am who I am, was sufficient. And I want to talk about the power today of the phrase, I am. Let's pray. Holy One, the great I am, God from God, light from light, Alpha and Omega. In this space, we take in our breath, and we know that we too take in your Holy Spirit, which gave us life at first breath, which sustained us through all our moments and times of trial and gives us a chance to breathe in new air right now. And for that, even when we can't name a thousand other things that are going right right now, we know that our breath is right. And it is a symbol of your strength and your sustenance that reaches us no matter what. And for that, we say thank you. And we love you, God. You are the great I am. Now, in this time of worship and reflection, may we be clear on who we are. And we pray all that in the sweet, holy, and precious name of Jesus. Amen. So my granddaddy was born on Juneteenth in Austin, Texas, in the lands of the Humanos Nation. And in these parts of Texas, black folks have celebrated Juneteenth, our little piece of freedom, for a very long time. And they celebrate it hard. It's taken very seriously in a way that maybe the rest of the nation is starting to catch on to. And I talk about my granddaddy a lot because he meant the world to me and he taught me so much. But on this Juneteenth, and happy birthday, granddad, up in heaven, I want to share with you perhaps the most important lesson that my granddad gave to me. And here it is. It can basically be boiled down to say, remember who you are and whose you are. And these are simple words with profound meaning, of course, that are more di difficult may maybe to pull off than you would think. Why? Because this world is designed to make us forget who we are. And it will teach you many of the wrong I ams. And if you come here regularly, you'll have heard me talk about these scripts that are placed on our lives that the world will impose on us or try to impose on us. And for example, everything around enslavement both then and now, writes really terrible scripts for everybody involved, for the oppressors and for the oppressed. And out of that, we learn some pretty terrible I ams. An I am that turns into the wrong I can't writes a very limiting and narrow script. Do you see that? For example, I am so poor that I can't go to school was the limiting script that many of our ancestors lived out. I am black, so I'll never have wealth. I am American, so I can't know what it means to be safe from bullets. Some of these I ams we think, some of these, as you can see, are forced on us with some evil you are's. You are a felon, so you can't vote. 
you are trans, so you can't live. You are any number of things, so you can't be part of a church. I mean, the wrong you are's are built into banking and real estate. My God, Have, has anyone tried to get an apartment here in New York City recently? I mean, if your I am isn't rich, then you wind up with a lot of I can't, right? And you are about to be taken advantage of. The limiting I ams are very much structural, and that's a grievous and wicked sin in this nation. But some of these limiting I ams are personally imposed too. And I've shared here before that one of mine, it was kind of a simple one or maybe a little playful, was that I believed I was terrible at math. And I said, I would say, I am bad at math, so I can't solve that problem. Or maybe you say, I'm a terrible runner, so I can't sign up for that marathon. I'm awful, I'm awful at partnerships or relationships, so I can't commit to that person. I'm a bad Christian, so I can't join a church, right? So we have these I ams, I can'ts. And I would love, as your homework for this week, but also just in this moment, I'm going to pause for a second. And I want you to think about some of the limiting I am's you have in your life. And even, I really want to push you to think of a limiting I am that you thought this morning. We have them, okay? So I'm going to pause for a minute and then we're going to check back in. and breathe into that question. And as you think of these I am's that perhaps hurt you, I wanna breathe out all of the I can'ts. Okay, and that's your homework too. You have a lot of them. So write this down. If you've got a journal, even just do it in your phone because this is something you want to be aware of. Okay, will you do it? Thank you, will you do it? <laughs> okay. So what I am's have led you to conclude that you can't? And yes, of course, I promise you that you have them. And even as I was preparing this word for you today, I caught myself doing the same thing a lot. I am impatient, or I'm slow, or I'm unmotivated, or I'm lazy. You know what I mean? These things I just thought. And these I am's creep into our daily thought patterns without our even noticing. And when your I am's become your I can'ts, you have already decided against a number of possibilities that you've never even given yourself the opportunity to consider. Because your I am said no too soon. And I believe this. Your I am's have a direct impact on what you will do. And what you do then has a direct impact on who you become. And living with the wrong I am's will stunt your growth, beloved. And if that's you, which it is, it's all of us, but if that's you, this is very much in your power to change. Your I am's are faithful and true, and they point you to the infinite. I'll give you some examples. Maybe you've heard them before. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am made in the image of God. I am capable. I am blessed. And when we shift our I am's into God's, you are's, then you start to draw the right conclusions for your life. Beloved, do you know who you are? I mean, do you really know who you are? Because if your I am's are not fully aligned with God's you are's, then there is something powerful in you that has forgotten the primary answer to who you are and whose you are. But when your I am's are in accordance with God's you are's, then things start becoming possible. And the sources of those wrong 
you ours start becoming unacceptable. In fact, once you commit to that, once you commit, once you decide that who you are is who God told you that you are, which is fearfully and wonderfully made, whensoever you hear differently, it's going to hit wrong. It won't feel right. You'll hear a bad you are, and you'll say, oh, no, I'm not, because your I am is that powerful. It's that powerful. And someone trying to shift that is actively trying to take your power away. But you, beloved, you can decide to live differently, even right here and right now. You can decide to see yourself differently. You can decide always, always to remember who you are and whose you are. I am a child of God, sums it up memorably and succinctly. And when all of your I am's flow from there, did you know that you would be unstoppable? What are some I am's you want to say? If you're online, I invite you to you know, share some, send us an email. Any of you want to share some I am's that you're inspired to feel right now? I am powerful. I am free. I'm just coming up with some right now. I am. I am capable You are capable and lovable. You are worthy of love. I am here. I'm, a, I'm alive. I mean, when we think and let all of our I am's flow from God's you are's, we can cast off all those unhelpful I am's, and we can mourn their impact because they have had destructive force in our lives. And then we can lay them at the altar and say goodbye. Then you can say, I am a survivor. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to stop. Please promise me that you will be very, very careful with your I am's and your I can'ts. Promise me that you'll keep in mind that God, the great I am, is infinitely powerful. God told Moses at Horeb just as much. When the great I am said, I am who I am, you are beloved. You are whose? God's. Let's answer this. You are beloved. You are whose? You are? You are whose? If you believe this, and you believe it with all of your heart, I want you to watch everything else get in formation. Amen.